Okay, here we go. This is the briefing for Military Times for the week of January 17, 2020. A look at what you missed from the headlines this week while you were driving that Humvee in the dark. Let's turn the lights on. The effects of an Iranian missile strike on a military base in Iraq housing U.S. troops was still being felt this week as cleanup from the attack got underway. Images of the rubble left in the wake of the attack on Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq showed the extent of the damage done by the strikes. Photos showed burned buildings and craters from missile impacts as crews worked to clear debris. No U.S. or Iraqi troops were hurt in the attack as forces at the base were given advance warning of the strike. All right, bring me back to the States. The Department of Justice is preparing to oust more than 20 Saudi military cadets from U.S. training in the wake of a deadly base shooting in Florida. In December, Saudi Arabian National 2nd Lieutenant Muhammad al-Shamrani killed three U.S. sailors and wounded several others at Naval Air Station Pensacola. The cadet was undergoing flight training at the time and was killed by local law enforcement officers. Now, Attorney General William Barr says 21 other Saudis who were found to have posted jihadi and anti-American content would be booted from the program and sent home. This was an act of terrorism. During the course of the investigation, we learned that the shooter posted a message on September 11th of this year stating the countdown has begun. Okay, let's lighten it up a bit. Leather jackets, the coolest official military apparel since the dawn of uniforms. Now, a new group of personnel gets to swagger around in service-approved coolness as leather jackets have been approved for Navy surface warfare officers. Images of the new coats are scarce, but Vice Admiral Richard Brown wore an example last year. The new jackets will have a knitted waistband and cuffs and are expected to be available in June. Now for a strange one. An Army National Guardsman fired from his job at the post office in the year 2000 for excessive use of military leave got a surprising note from his former employer recently. Get back to work. Retired Sergeant Major Richard Erickson, a National Guard Special Forces veteran with a Purple Heart, has been battling with the post office for 20 years since his firing. Though his case is still in limbo, he finally got the note to return to the job on January 6th. All right, let's keep it weird. Ramifications from the strike on a top Iranian general prompted a response from an unexpected source recently. Iraqi cleric and Shiite militia leader Muqtada al-Sadr. Al-Sadr took to Twitter to taunt President Donald Trump, calling him a son of casinos and nightclubs, and saying U.S. weapons were weaker than mosquito bites. Who knew that guy was on Twitter? Now to a story about the Australian military's response to the devastating bushfires that have raged across the country recently. As fires worsened, every branch of the Aussie military was called on to respond. Take a look at what they've been doing. As you know, over the last uh, 24 to 36 hours, very difficult conditions. I must say, while we haven't seen the potential uh, catastrophic effects that we potentially expected. That's not through good luck, that has been through the wonderful work of our emergency management services. It's really terrifying. I felt quite useless back in Melbourne. I couldn't really do anything. And to know mum and dad were there was pretty terrifying, yeah. What are you expecting to see when you go on the ground? Um, I think it's going to be pretty devastating. Um, <laughs> I don't think I'll recognise a lot of the a lot of the town. The services we're providing for the isolated communities of Gippsland include fuel, food, and medical evacuation. They 
these guys are doing an absolute marvellous job. There's just a whole lot, uh, big amount of them here. It's like having an, an army of ants, but they really are the army. <laughs> it's marvellous. And that's all we have time for this week on The Briefing. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and follow these stories and more on MilitaryTimes.com. Sign up for our early bird briefing to get the news at ODARK30 every morning and keep up with the latest. Okay, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.